What's up guys, I'm Ari Rochelle and this is Nuggets of Truth. Now many Christians use the term immaculate conception without actually knowing what it means. And if you're like me, you thought the immaculate conception was about the birth of Jesus. But it's not. It's actually about the birth of Mary. Actually, it's about the conception of Mary. Specifically, how she was kept from sin at her conception. So with that said, let's just get into this. The first point Catholics use to defend this belief is Luke chapter 1 verse 28. And it says, And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. They say this term, O favored one, is the first indicator that Mary was without sin because God saved her from sin at, the con at her conception. Now, maybe it's just me, but this doesn't seem... To make any sense i can honestly say calling mary favored or blessed or full of grace or any other description doesn't even hint at freedom from sin but that's fine now this just leaves the big question of why gabriel would refer to mary in this way if it has nothing to do with her being saved from sin well is because Mary was chosen to give birth to the Son of God. This title isn't about Mary and her perfection. It's about the fact that she was chosen by God to carry God. If Mary wasn't chosen to be the mother of God, she wouldn't be favored. So being favored isn't an indicator of who Mary was, but it was an indicator of what she was chosen for. This title isn't like Abraham's, who was called a friend of God. It's not like David, who was called a man after God's own heart. It's not Ezekiel, who was uh, called son of man, which is what Jesus referred to himself as. This title isn't in any way saying Mary was perfect or Mary was kept from sin, Instead, it's an indicator of what she was called to do. This is why Luke chapter 1 verse 29 says the saying troubled her. If Mary had grown up without sin, she wouldn't have been troubled and confused by the saying. No, she would have been like, yep, that makes sense. I am the one who has never sinned before because God kept me from sinning. I know I'm perfect. Nope, instead she said this or she felt this. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. Mary didn't even understand why Gabriel would have said that to her. If she was without sin and perfect as Catholics tried to persuade us that she was, she would have put two and two together. But instead, Gabriel had to explain in verses 30 through 33 this. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Everything about Mary's greeting was about Jesus. Not Mary. It was about the Son of God. Mary wasn't a necessity to Jesus coming to earth. Yep. Let that just sink in for a moment. If Mary had rejected this call, God would have raised up another, like he did with Terah, like he did with Moses, and like he would have done with Esther, as Mordecai warned her in Esther chapter 4, verse 13 through 14. Then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, Do not think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place, but you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Mary wasn't the necessity. Jesus was. Why? Because Mary wasn't perfect. She was chosen by God. Therefore, she was favored. She was chosen to carry God himself in her womb. Therefore, she was blessed among women. But Mary could have said no. Therefore, Mary wasn't the center of the greeting Gabriel gave. Her call was the center of Gabriel's message. Another argument is that Romans chapter 3 verse 23 doesn't apply to everyone. So let's read that real quick. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I just want you to let that sink in for a second. According to Catholics, Paul, under the influence of God, didn't mean all people when he wrote all. No, no, no. 
and said he meant to say some or most people because there are exceptions to this, such as children. Yep, apparently children cannot sin because of the age of accountability. You know what I find interesting about that statement? It doesn't hold any biblical weight. That's right. Nowhere in the Bible do you see anything about the age of accountability. So where does this idea come from? Well, according to Catholics, which I just want to make clear, aren't the only people who believe in the age of accountability, but they're who we're talking about, so we're going to go with their argument. And their argument is, you have to have the ability to reason and the ability to intend to sin. So here's the problem with that. From the day Adam ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, all of mankind's eyes were open to the difference between good and evil. This is why a child will lie when they do something that they think that they could possibly get in trouble for, even if it wasn't something that they were told not to do. They have that reason, no matter the age. <laughs> they have that reason. This is also why Cain lied, even though there was no law or concept of murder yet. All people have the concept of right and wrong, which is why Paul writes that none have any excuse. Romans chapter 1 verse 20. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. Lastly, Catholics admit that Mary acknowledged the need for a savior in Luke chapter 1, verse 46 through 47. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. Yet, Catholics argue that though she needed a savior, God saved her from sin prior to sinning. This not only makes no sense, but it's also blasphemous and unbiblical. First of all, to save Mary from sin so that she didn't sin would be showing partiality, which God has great disdain for throughout scripture. In fact, he says that it makes you an unjust judge. So therefore, God would be an unjust judge, which would be blasphemous because God is perfect. He does not sin. Second, the only way to save someone from sin is through the redeeming blood of Jesus Christ, who was not born, nor was he even conceived at the time of Mary's conception. So how could Mary have been saved from sin without Jesus? Acts chapter 4 verse 12, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. No one could save Mary except Jesus, whose name hadn't been given to men yet, nor had he been born yet, so he couldn't have died and rose again to save her from her sins before she could sin. Now, here's one question I have. If Mary was kept from sinning, then why didn't God keep all of Jesus' ancestors from sinning? Why not keep his bloodline as pure as possible instead of allowing prostitutes, heathens, murderers, and adulterers, and other sinners into it? Instead, he only kept Mary from sin. Why? That just doesn't seem to make any sense. Why would he keep Mary from sin? It wasn't a necessity to Jesus being born without sin. So why was Mary born why would why would Mary be conceived and kept from sin? That just doesn't make sense. Neither is there any biblical proof for it. So just to sum everything up for you guys, the Immaculate Conception is a Catholic belief that Mary was kept from sin from the point of conception. The problem with that is that Mary clearly acknowledges she needs a savior. Um, Paul writes through the influence of the Holy Spirit that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The reason that Mary was called favored one was because God chose her to carry God the Son, which is in fact a big deal. And I'm not saying that it isn't. I'm just saying that she was not without sin, which is why she acknowledged her need for a savior and also why she was confused and troubled by the saying of being called favored one and that the Lord was with her. Anyways, let us know what your thoughts are on the Immaculate Conception. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please feel free to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. And until next time, God bless.